Nowadays, cartoons don't just get cancelled anymore, they're completely erased from existence. Sorta. You see, we're living through what feels like the end of the streaming wars. Everyone wanted to dethrone Netflix only for the big red letter to hold onto the crown the entire time, with competitors now crawling back and throwing their shows on the platform once more. But every war has its casualties, and this one extends beyond our wallets, as pretty much all the major streaming platforms have gone through numerous content purges, removing dozens of shows and movies from their library, including original programming made for the service, titles that weren't available anywhere else. With the animation industry in a dark place and strikes on the horizon, I wanted to take a moment to highlight the cartoons that have been caught up in these purges, deleted from their respective streaming services, and point you to any official alternatives when possible. The best place to start is definitely with Max. Can you think of a more shining example of fumbling the bag? When it first launched as HBO Max in May 2020, I thought we had the holy grail of streaming services. In large part due to Warner Bros. Discovery's expansive Cartoon Network and Adult Swim catalog. Despite their immense popularity, a huge chunk of the Cartoon Network and Adult Swim library weren't available on streaming in the US. But if anything would turn that around, it'd be Max since it's owned by the same parent company. Company. And sure enough, the service launched with what felt like all the heavy hitters, and the good times kept on rolling, as Max announced that it would be the home for several new animated series, including the viral sensation Infinity Train, rolling out its third season exclusively on Max. And if that wasn't dope enough, close enough! The long-awaited adult animated comedy created by J.G. Quintel of regular show fame was also set to premiere on Max after three long years of radio silence. Old cartoons, new cartoons, I was already smitten with his live-action offerings, but the amount of love they were showing animation solidified Max as a worthy competitor to Netflix in my eyes. The first one to emerge during the streaming wars. But sadly, this digital paradise couldn't last forever. Corporate greed and budget cuts always have the last laugh. Summer 2022 saw the first big purge of content from Max, especially original content. They weren't just picking on cartoons either. Raised by Wolves, an original sci-fi drama that I adored, was removed from Max after being cancelled a few months prior, resurfacing on Tubi and the Roku channel a little while after. Sadly, the Max original cartoons didn't get the same happy ending. Infinity Train and Close Enough were wiped from the streaming service, alongside Final Space, The Fungies, Tig and Seek, Aquaman, The King of Atlantis, Dodo, Elliot from Earth, Summer Camp Island, Mau Mau Heroes of Pure Heart, Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures, Okay KO Let's Be Heroes, Uncle Grandpa, Victor and Valentino, Mighty Magiswords, Yabba Dabba Dinosaurs, Messi Goes to Hokkaido, The Ollie and Moon Show, Squish, Mia's Magic Playground, and <sighs> Little Ellen! Ah! Look, I'm not gonna act like I'm torn up about every single one of these shows leaving the platform especially since a handful of them are preschool shows I was never going to watch anyways. But aside from the importance of media preservation and showcasing people's hard work, some of these removals were truly a tragedy. We waited three years to get our hands on Close Enough, only for it to be gone in two. The fourth season getting cancelled despite already being written. It just feels cruel, man! I didn't have time to watch all of Elliot from Earth, but it was still pretty awesome to see a chunk of Gumball alumni create something a bit more serialized, and I feel like a lot of Gumball fans never even had the chance to find it. Mama was renewed for a second season that was silently cancelled, and this removal was the nail in the coffin for the series. Summer Camp Island was removed before the final season was even released, which saw a big delay prior to getting wiped from Max. Luckily, the series got to finish airing on Cartoon Network proper in 2023, but the other shows weren't so lucky. By the time that they were removed, Close Enough, Elliot from Earth, The Fungies, and Take and Seek were actually airing on TV. But after The Purge, not only were all the cartoons branded as Max Originals dropped from the airwaves, but they were removed from all digital storefronts, meaning they can no longer be purchased. There's no longer any way to support these shows legally. Infinity Train exists in this weird limbo where it's been removed from most storefronts, but books 1, 2, and 4 can still be purchased on Amazon. Yeah, they screwed over the best book.
Around this time, series creator Owen Dennis stated that Warner was looking into selling Infinity Train to other streaming services so the four existing seasons could at least be accessed on a major platform. But almost two years later, and nothing has come from this. Summer Camp Island can still be purchased digitally, but it's not available on any streaming service. Everything that wasn't branded as a mass original at some point can still be purchased, and a lot of them are on Hulu. But sadly, the purges for Max didn't stop there. They came for more Cartoon Network originals over the next year. Regular Show the Movie, Steven Universe the Movie, The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack, Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, Dexter's Laboratory, every Ben 10 series aside from the OG and reboot, Clarence, various seasons of the Flintstones, various seasons of Looney Tunes, and very recently, Codename Kids Next Door. Why does this keep happening to me? Hey Max, your Cartoon Network hub has a loathsful lack of Cartoon Network! Some of these are on Hulu, some of these might be on fucking Boomerang, but at this point, is it even worth tuning into Max for its animated library? Their originals get sabotaged and cancelled. They greatly reduced their Cartoon Network catalog. Hell, even Adult Swim has taken a beating, animated and live action. Space Ghost Coast to Coast, China, Illinois, Frisky Dingo, Hot Streets, The Jellies, Lucy, the Daughter of the Devil, and The Shivering Truth, all gone. Now to Max's credit, a few other shows that were slated to leave or have left before ended up sticking around, like C-Lab, Joe Para, Loiter Squad, and Super Jail so clearly they want to keep shows around when possible. And since Adult Swim is a certified GOAT, the shows that were removed have all of their episodes available on their website for free, which is pretty amazing. But why do all of this? Why remove shows, even the ones made for the service? While the answer can be boiled down to money, there is a lot of assumptions and misinformation flying around with these removals some of which I fed into in the past, mainly that these shows were written off for tax benefits. While that might be true for some of these shows, like being made unavailable for purchase kind of points in that direction, we don't have confirmation on if that's truly the case one way or another. Beyond that, hosting all of these shows and movies on the platform, even if the company owns them, isn't cheap. It still requires contracts and money, so when a lot of these shows are removed in bulk, it's very likely that the deal Max had expired and the shows weren't performing well enough to warrant a renewal, as tragic as that may be. I don't like it or agree with it, but I do want to make it clear that it's not as cut and dry as a CEO banishing quality television to the Shadow Realm so that they can buy a shiny new yacht. I mean, I'm sure that might influence things, but it's not the sole factor. And again, it's not always a tax write-off. I wish I could say Max was the only platform purging content, but if anything, they were just the trendsetters, as one of their peers and competitors, Paramount Plus, recently got in on the action, sniping a few of their own originals in the process. Like Max, they started small but are slowly lining up titles for the shopping block. At first, Fairly Odd Parents, Fairly Otter, and Star Trek Prodigy were removed in 2023. And as to be expected, while Star Trek fans were upset, a lot of Nick heads saw the removal of Fairly Otter as a mercy killing. Is the live-action pseudo-sequel with moments of extremely mediocre animation really that big of a loss? Eh, maybe not, but it still sets a dangerous precedent. Not only was Fairly Otter removed from the platform, but it was wiped from Nick's website and quickly faded from the schedule, putting an end to an already short-lived run on TV. This revival, in the eyes of Paramount, effectively doesn't exist. I mean, I'm sure you could pirate it, but that just sounds like setting yourself up for a creepypasta. I downloaded the Fairly Otter sitcom, and now my computer won't stop printing headshots of Butch Hartman! Now Star Trek Prodigy got dealt a better hand, as the series ended up getting rescued by Netflix. As someone who never got into Star Trek, I'm still glad it was able to move to a larger platform and hopefully gain more exposure. And I'd like to think backlash from fans stopped it from falling to the wayside, unlike Fairly Otter. Plus, Star Trek is a much larger IP than Fairly Odd Parents. Alas, these two shows were just a warm up. As in 2024, Paramount dropped over a dozen kids' titles from their service without warning, most of which animated, and two of those branded as Paramount Plus Originals Big Nate, The Rugrats Reboot, Blues Clues and You, It's Pony, Middlemost Post, Ollie's Pack. Santiago of the Seas, Back at the Barnyard, Select Seasons of the Penguins of Madagascar, Those Bastards, Select Seasons of Kung Fu Panda Legends of Awesomeness, 
Monsters vs. Aliens, and Peter Rabbit. Keep in mind, we're only in April! Now, if you name drop most of these shows in casual conversation, I'll probably just hit you with a... Uh, HUH?! But just like with Max, it sucks that the self-proclaimed hub of these shows can drop them at a moment's notice. Rugrats and Big Nate being the two most shocking names on this list, as they were being pushed as the future of Nickelodeon, and again, were some of the few original titles they had on Paramount. And to add insult to injury, they have been completely scrubbed from Nickelodeon's website. Which is really strange, given that Rugrats was airing new episodes on the Nicktoons channel, ahead of Paramount+. Plus. Which seemed a bit random, but I guess now we know why. Still, being removed from the website makes me wonder if they're even going to cross the finish line. Or if airing on Nicktoons is some way to burn through the remaining episodes and fulfill some contractual obligation. Not really caring if it succeeds, given that the Nicktoons channel rakes in like 50,000 viewers on a good day. Spoiler alert! That's bad! These shows are still available for purchase on digital storefronts at the time of making this video, so again, I don't think these are necessarily going the way of tax write-offs. I just think they may not have been performing as strong as executives wanted, and they don't want to spend the money hosting them on their service. In fact, this is what Paramount had to say in a financial report prior to the purge. Fuck money, get bitches! Wait, that's not the right one. In connection with our continued review of our international content strategy, during the first quarter of 2024, we made a strategic decision to focus on content with mass global appeal. As a part of this, we are rationalizing original content on Paramount+, Plus, especially internationally, and improving the efficiency of our linear network programming. As a result, we have reviewed our expensive global content portfolio and are removing select content from our platforms. So yeah, broke bitches evicting shows so they can be a little less broke. This is becoming a tale as old as time in the streaming era, and I kinda want off this wild ride. Thankfully, this seems to be the worst of it when it comes to animated titles getting purged. At least for now. As other platforms, while purging content, have seemed to leave the cartoons alone for the time being. Not that any content getting purged is a good thing. Disney Plus began removing content in May 2023 after losing 4 million subscribers in the first quarter of the year. And while these titles are mainly documentaries, filled sitcoms, and a few movies, one cartoon did take a hit amongst all of this chaos. It may not be a show you heard about, and while it was owned by Disney, it wasn't on their platform, but it's one I was tuning into and really enjoyed. An adult animated series on FXX and Hulu by the name of Little Demon. Featuring the talents of Aubrey Plaza, Danny DeVito, and his daughter Lucy DeVito, this sitcom followed the misadventures of the Antichrist, Chrissy, and her mother Laura, as their quiet suburban life is uprooted by the emergence of Chrissy's powers. I really liked this one. It grew on me pretty quickly. It felt like a breath of fresh air. I dug the characters, especially Laura. And I was getting immersed into its lore and world building. I actually really dug this interpretation of Hell. And now it's gone forever and no longer on Hulu. <laughs> it sucks, man. Now, I do believe that for the most part, a lot of the animated Disney Plus originals are safe because they're based off popular IP, are generally well received, and are on a larger platform than Paramount. But as we've seen with both Max and Paramount, even the shows we think are protected can be sniped at the drop of a hat. And that still doesn't excuse all the live action projects wiped from the service that are now floating in the void without a home to call their own. And I have a feeling people didn't bother preserving all of these titles before they got axed. So who knows what's doomed to potentially become lost media now? Tell me with a straight face people were going out of their way to archive Club Mickey Mouse. It's rough out here, dog. Now, from what I found researching this video, it doesn't seem like any other notable streaming services have removed any original content, at least in the US. And I'm not gonna point to every time a Cartoon Network or Nick show leaves a service like Netflix, because that's to be expected. Netflix has titles coming and going all the time. But we're not done here yet, as there's one show caught in a very frustrating predicament that I want to talk about. Pantheon. Johnny Two Cellos made a great video selling people on the show a while back that I implore you all to check out after this one, because I honestly find it tough to give this show a good elevator pitch without going into an insane amount of detail. But if you dig the anime Serial Experiments Lane, this show loosely reminds me of it, but Pantheon is much more focused on being a sci-fi drama. It's a show that feels like it'd be right at home next to animated action dramas like Invincible or The Legends of Vox Machina, which means it fit perfectly on Prime. And it was on there, if you had an AMC Plus subscription. Yeah, for some reason this show was meant to be an AMC Plus original. Can I get a show of hands for everyone in the room with an AMC Plus subscription? 
Get the fuck out! You probably know where this is going. With AMC having little confidence in the series, Pantheon didn't last long on the service, and despite already being picked up for a second season that was apparently finished, the series was removed from streaming completely in January 2023. In the aftermath of this removal, fans and animation lovers alike campaigned for the show to be picked up by another streaming service, namely Amazon Prime. And they complied later that year, releasing seasons one and two on their platform in Australia and New Zealand. I mean, I'm glad Australians finally have something other than kangaroos and giant spiders to look forward to, but why only release the show here? Well, my game theory is that however AMC Plus handled disposing the series in 2023 might be preventing it from getting re-released in the US. You can pull up Pantheon on Amazon's website, but if you're a filthy American like me, you'll be hit with the routine title is currently unavailable message, forever taunting us that the show remains out of reach. I mean, you could use a VPN, but that still keeps the show at the level of a cult classic with a small following instead of a widespread release that could give it the chance to become a mainstream hit like its contemporaries. Maybe Prime hasn't released the show over here yet because they're planning on rolling it out later this year, maybe building it as a brand new series and masking the fact that they're approaching a content drought as a result of the strikes and not paying talent fairly. But again, we just don't know. It's a frustrating spot for any show to be in. But there you have it every cartoon deleted from streaming so far. If we missed any, feel free to sound off in the comments. If you found this video informative, throw it a like, and subscribe to the channel for more cartoon content. Videos that usually aren't as depressing as this one was. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys later.